Hi, uh, thank you. Uh, thank you, uh, Krista and, and Magnus, for uh, uh, hosting everybody and bringing everybody together. I think it's uh, critical in a uh, new startup industry, even though many of, of the people out here have been working 40 plus years uh, trying to make this happen, that, 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 that people come together and exchange stories, information to uh, help everybody be more successful um, as they battle the current system and try to bring something new into place. Um, uh, myself, um, I'm a, a designer by trade. I started out uh, mechanical engineering and switched over to um, kind of the car design world. I graduated from Art Center um, and spent most of my uh, professional career uh, with Johns Controls working within the car industry and working for essentially with um, pretty much every car manufacturer in the world today, um, including uh, spending many trips up here to uh, Gutenberg at uh, Volvo. Um, I now spend time um, with these three organizations. Ongoing transportation is focused on um, designing a new vision for transportation and how we move around the planet. Um, Hunt Green is an office in DC um, so that a designer can better understand policy and so forth. Um, and New North Center is an a, um, executive education institution that teaches business leaders about the value of design, creative process, reinvention, innovation, um, but from a designer's perspective versus a traditional uh, MBA finance perspective. Um, uh, my, my journey to be standing here uh, today um, comes from uh, realizing that within the car industry, um, it has a, a finite uh, future, and I'll talk a little bit more about that in, in, in uh, later in my presentation, but that that we needed new systems that were also very exciting to move people around the planet. And um, before deciding what that was, I decided to convene people together in a similar fashion um, uh, several years ago and, and created the Sustainable Mobility Summit, so in the how I met uh, uh, Christopher about four or five years ago. Um, following that convening um, event, that's also where I met Debbie and others, um, I was asked to testify before Congre U.S. Congress about the uh, bailout and all the troubles that were happening uh, uh, in Detroit with Ford and GM and others. Um, uh, I wasn't on, on CNN or anything um, um, like the uh, CEOs that were called in, but um, I got motivated by being asked by Congress a, a, a designer's opinion on what should happen um, for you know, $30, $40 billion bailout uh, situation for Detroit. I've been since trying to design a future exciting vision for how people and goods move around and in, in the process starting to learn about pod cars and PRT systems and how um, that could possibly be a transitionary new system for moving people around from our current dependence on, on cars. Um, so I'm going to talk a little bit more from a uh, refugee from the car industry, um, excited about what, what pod cars and, and, and PRT has to offer. Um, I probably will not get into the technical depth that a lot of you um, have in this, this area, though I've, I've had the pleasure of spending time with um, Ed Anderson and uh, Marcel Berger over the last year, the uh, last couple of years, learning a lot more about the history, um, but I'm by no means an expert um, uh, in the, the PRT pod car world. But knowing that one of the biggest um, uh, obstacles or hindrances or barriers to, to widespread growth and acceptance of pod cars is cars themselves and people's emotional connection to them and trying to figure out how to get them to move from their cars into something else like um, uh, pod cars. I want to talk about that more. So, so what's the problem? Um, you know, pod cars are, are obviously very efficient. Um, the, the technology is, is there and growing, and, and we saw um, a great example this morning of a system that's now um, um, up and running, um, and there's going to be more to follow, as we also know about. Um, it's it's, it's cost-effective, um, it's got a smaller footprint, um, and pod cars are going to look cool in movies as it comes out. Um, so if pod cars are so great, um, uh, how do we move forward? Um, what are the... Uh, uh, what's holding us back from making pod cars a widely accepted system, not just a um, 
getting us out of you know diesel shuttles in parking environments, but actually widespread use across um, cities. Um, you know, is it, is it a money issue? Um, uh, the financial issues are always there. Um, Christer, I don't know if he's here, but um, anybody who needs money, um, Christer will offer to help you out on the way out. <laughs> Um, technology, I think we're, we're, we're quite close. Um, there's a number of great systems that are either here in, in the lobby or in active use are about to be to come. Um, I don't think there's miracles that need to happen for the technology to, to, to be widely adopted. I think it's obviously a very safe system, so I don't think that's a barrier or issues. I think there are potential enemies out there that will slow um, the growth that need to be understood. I think it's important that we ask the right questions for, for the systems to um, uh, move forward faster. In terms of asking the right questions, um, these are examples of, this is an example of the type of question that needs to be asked. Um, not just, do we need better buses? Um, not necessarily, what we actually need is more people on the buses. That's the question that we need to, to solve. Most people get on and off the bus, really have no idea what the technology is inside. They just want the, the bus type device to, to, to help them get from A to B efficiently and effectively. Um, and, and it's actual increased ridership that we need, not just the technology um, behind it. Um, enemies of pod cars. And I think my, my past in the car world and, and hopefully moving into the, the pod car world, the, um, I don't know if anybody, if you've seen this movie, but there's a lot of great insight. Um, Johnny Depp plays the uh, hero in that movie. Um, so are, are the enemies to widespread pod car use, um, is, is the bus industry, trolley industry, um, light rail, um, are they getting in the way? Um, is the road industry just would prefer to, to, to lay down huge miles of, of cement and they don't want to change? Um, the car industry, would they just like to continue to make uh, more and more cars and try to solve it that way? Uh, maybe solving it by just changing one technological aspect of the car um, over to electric vehicles and obviously what was just reiterated in the presentation before me that definitely won't solve the problem does nothing for for congestion it does a little bit for for energy usage but doesn't do anything for congestion in urban dense environments um, autonomous vehicles uh, might be a long-term um, solution because it requires less um, uh, uh, significant infra infrastructural investment um, there's obviously political issues, but I think uh, people and consumers are, are a, a, a major area of focus to get people excited about something other than cars. And cars are, today, um, uh, this is why I like talking about this, it's, it's not a, especially in the U.S., and a lot of the way I'm going to talk today is, is from a U.S.-centric perspective, that people are very emotionally attached uh, to their car, and that's been part of the kind of the American dream and, and the lifestyle of living in a suburban environment and, and, and commuting to the city and going back. And um, the decision on which car to purchase um, is very subjective. It's very emotional. It's 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 a big part of what makes uh, your your personal brand image, I guess. And and to to design something that's going to get people away from that into something else, that, that new solution better be as exciting or more exciting than the car that they're attached to today. Um, because it's more than just the data aspects that's going to get them to change. And so I'm excited about being part of this discussion to help make pod car uh, transportation experiences as exciting as possible if people want to, to change and move. And, and today with the car, even though it may not be the fastest, um, people know pretty much exactly what to expect. They're in their own personal space. It's theirs. Um, it's what they've grown up with. It's what their parents and their grandparents have used. And so there's no surprises. And, and um, people are comfortable with that, so they don't want to change. Um, and as I just explained, um, uh, park cars need to compete with that image um, or people aren't going to want to change very fast. Eventually, they will change because it'll be too painful. Um, you know, the energy issues, you know, the, the cost of ownership, insurance, taxes, fees, you know, parking, maintenance. Right now, today in the U.S., um, people don't realize all of the um, kind of negative hassles that come with, with car ownership. And so they just stay with it and they'll own three cars and they'll, 
spend a lot of money around that um, vehicle. Um, and, and though, I think that that is about to change. But that's what they're used to doing today. Um, just to put this in perspective, um, you know, in 1900, we, we kind of rode into the last century on a horse. And um, if you ask people what you, what you wanted to improve with it, they would probably say, you know, we just need a, you know, a faster horse. Uh, but that's not what happened. You know, the device that we left the last century in had nothing to do with where we started. There's no commonality um, with the horse. So pretty much in every technical or every aspect, the vehicle we left the last century in um, 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 uh, surpassed every aspect of the horse. The horse is still there today. Um, though you don't go to work with it anymore. You, you play with it on the weekends or something. But, um, and I think the same thing is going to happen with cars. Cars will um, will still um, be there at the end of the century, but you're going to play with them. And the people that like to drive them, or race them, or go fast and, and enjoy all the dynamics of a car, um, you'll be able to do that for the fun entertainment aspects of a car. But for people that need to uh, commute, or go to work, or have a very specific need, other devices are going to move people around. And, and pod cars very much fit that, that category. So I think that pod cars are very logical and desirable transitionary transportation method for people to get out of their cars because it's personal, um, it solves the problem, it'll be more cost effective, um, but it still um, has a lot of the aspects of a car but without, with much fewer of the uh, pain points that cars have today. Um, there's signs of hope. <laughs> Um, in the U.S., when I, when I graduated from high school, the, the, uh, uh, the kind of rite of passage or the, the desired thing to have when you graduate from school was your own car because of the symbol of freedom. You could get out of the house, you could go see your friends, and you wanted a car when you graduated um, uh, from high school. But today, um, kids want these devices because they can, um, instead of seeing one friend at a time with their car, they can talk to all their friends 24 hours a day, anywhere in the world, all at once. And that's pretty hard for a physical car to compete with. These also, um, you don't have to park these, you don't have to pay car insurance in these, they don't leak oil. Um, and there's obviously lots of other advantages. So the, the, the aspiration that kids used to have for owning a car and the image that came with that um, is going down. And, and I'll explain that, that um, a little bit more. Um, and, and I saw that personally, and, and for those of you who are in, in San Jose, you've probably seen this uh, image before when I presented there, but um, a year and a half ago, a friend of mine's the, the chief designer for McLaren, and he just designed the new uh, M, uh, MC124C, the funny new F1 McLaren that they just came out with. And he wanted to debut it out of California Arts Center, and that should, no, no problem. And so he brought the vehicle out, and it was a big deal. Uh, Jay Leno was there, and a bunch of other million dollar cars were there, and I thought it would be a great way to get my son, which you see pictured here, excited about car design and, and go fast cars and the sexiness of cars. And so I, I brought him up, and he'd meet the designer, meet Jay Leno, and you know, kind of get pulled into that world that I, that I grew up in. And so we get up close to the unveiling of the car, and you know, all this you know, excitement's happening and we're right up in front and they, they pull the veil off the car and I'm all excited, you know, seeing the new car and my son um, could care less. And he's there playing, you know, worried about his high score and Angry Birds um, instead of, you know, what I would have, you know, drooled over as a kid to be that close to a go fast car. So anyway, I think there's more and more kids that are looking at other things to provide that excitement than just owning the latest Mustang or whatever. Um, I think there's also, um, this is kind of an odd thing to propose for, for, for helping out the polycar situation, but um, I think if you look at the standard view in the US of people's view of, of, of public transit or mass transit, um, it's, it's too scary. You, um, you go from one point to another and the devices, whether bus, light rail, whatever, you know, stops at every point, the doors open, scary people could get in. That, that, that simple fact keeps a lot of US public from using 
uh, uh, public transportation. Obviously, with pod cars going from point to point without the doors opening, that's a very desirable, subjective aspect of the vehicle that I think would actually be very appealing to, to Americans who want to use that to, to get around instead of owning more cars. Um, right now at the moment, I think the resistance to change is, is lowering. Um, it's still not quite painful enough, the, the price of gas at, at, at the pump. Um, and so they're still sticking around with, with, with cars for the moment. Um, but I think the number of these things are, are going to um, lower and allow change to happen faster. Um, the solution, um, uh, I think the solutions need to be balanced. Um, uh, I think they need to be trusted because people trust their cars and so whatever comes next needs to be a trusted, reliable system. They need to be integrated. Um, there's a lot of discussion on the look and feel of the vehicle itself, but the, the structure and the guideways and the rails, I think, also need a, a lot of work to make them integrated to um, whether it's a, an architectural environment like we have here in Stockholm or, or whatever city they get integrated in. Um, and of course, they need to be cool to get people out of their cars and something else. Um, I think it's very important to look at the design of future podcast systems from the experience that people have when they engage with it, not just from um, all of the technical aspects, which, which of course need to be solved in the financial equations to, to operate the businesses around pod cars need to be solved, but the experience that people go through um, from the time they make the decision to the way they engage, to the way they stand, wait, get in, use, and so forth, and that entire experience needs to be um, designed. Um, you're familiar with um, iPhones and iPads and so forth, um, those solutions are actually um, you know, more expensive than, than, than what they replaced. Um, but as you've probably seen, um, Apple is now you know, worth more than Microsoft. And, and a lot of that was as a result of the experience of working with their product. Not just the technical aspects of the iPhone or I, I, iPad, and if you've used some Android, some of the other um, technological solutions out there, um, in some cases they actually have better specs to their technical product, but they don't have the experience. And the experience is what draws people to want to use it and spend their their money. And if you look at you know how Apple positions, it's the experience and dealing with both the hardware and the software and the the the, the resultant. Um, uh, thoughts you have of the product that gets people engaged and staying with and obviously keeping um, Apple very, um, very happy. Uh, so with that, I uh, want to thank you for letting me be here and share some thoughts. Um, as my son, I asked him to, dry, to draw the ultimate car solution and uh, very quickly he was tired and could not come up with that. So he wants to draw pod cars now, so, so thank you.